Uh, thank you all for coming today. Um, I'm here because uh, some information was recently brought to light about uh, Jeremy Hammond's judge. Um, as you know, Jeremy Hammond uh, was accused of hacking into the global intelli intelligence agency Stratford. Um, it has recently been discovered that uh, Judge Preska's husband was uh, involved with Stratford. Um, he was one of the people whose information was uh, leaked to the public. And Judge Preska has uh, claimed that Jeremy is more dangerous than an online sexual predator for uh, his accusations of, uh, of stealing information from Stratford. Um, and uh, I believe that says something about the nature of this crime. Um, and uh, uh, this has been like a long and terrible trial already. Uh, and it hasn't even begun. Judge Prescott has denied bond for Jeremy, and she refuses to recuse herself despite latent conflict of interest. Um, and uh, we are calling on the people of New York, the people of the United States, to call in to pressure, um, to demand that Judge Loretta Preska recuse herself from this case so that Jeremy Hammond gets a shot at a fair trial. Um, I have a statement from uh, Chris Hedges. And again, this is by Chris Hedges. Um, the security and surveillance state is creating a hermetically closed system of power. It is doing this by rewriting laws to subvert the Constitution and grant itself the ability to criminalize all forms of dissent. The FISA Amendment Act, the Authorization to Use Military Force Act, the Enhanced Terrorism Laws, and the Misuse of Espionage Act to silence whistleblowers, and the National Defense, Defense Authorization Act, Section 1021, which empowers the government to use the military to seize and detain U.S. citizens, strip citizens of due process, and hold them in indefinite detention, are chilling examples of a new America, an America where freedom and liberty have become a hollow cliché. Nearly all of the government's actions and decisions many of which violate our most cherished civil liberties and defy the constitutional call for a separation of powers, are now effectively hidden from the public. These decisions are beyond scrutiny of the press or the judiciary. judiciary. At the same time, we as citizens have no privacy left. The government has handed to itself the capacity to carry out the warrantless wiretapping, monitoring, and eavesdropping on tens of millions of citizens. Our personal data, correspondence, histories, employment records, private activities, phone logs, email exchanges, travel, and political views are stored in per perpetuity to, in government supercomputers. We are the most monitored, spied on, photographed, listened to, and watched population in human history. Our security and surveillance state now dwarfs the cruder forms of internal control of past totalitarian states, from Nazi Germany to the Stasi state in East Germany to Stalin's Soviet Union. Anyone, including whistleblowers at the National Security Agency or the CIA, who attempts to bring to light government crimes, as we have seen with the Obama administration's use of the Espionage Act six times to silence dissidents within the system, is hounded, persecuted, and faces the possibility of long prison terms. Those who have the skills and capacity to electronically enter those closed systems of information terrify the states. They are treated not as criminals, but as terrorists. They are denied fair trials. They are imprisoned in conditions that can only be described as torture. They are subject to murky statutes 
and laws that make a mockery of democracy and have no place in open society. And the state, when it confronts those who have this capacity, uses everything at its disposal to destroy these opponents. We are not asking today for very much. We are asking for a fair hearing in a court of law. We are asking that Jeremy Hammond be permitted to present his case before a judge who does not have a personal involvement in his alleged activities, a personal involvement that will clearly prejudice the outcome. Hammond has enough stacked against him already. He at least deserves a chance at justice. It is a sad commentary on U.S. society that we, the dissidents, who call for the rule of law while the power elites and the organs of the state distort and subvert the rule of law. Our society has been turned upside down. We need to resist in every way possible this gross inversion of democracy, not only for Hammond, but for ourselves. And that was by Chris Hedges. Um, I would like to introduce our first speaker. What, what's your name? I'm Natalie Wahlberg. That's uh, N-A-T-A-L-I-E-W-A-H-L-B -E as in boy, E-R-G. I'm a member of Occupy Chicago's press team, and I help with uh, the Jeremy Hammond Solidarity Network. Um, I you kind of keep the uh, visuals this way, so it looks like you're talking into the camera from now on. Yeah. I didn't want to stop you before while you were talking. Um, so I would like to uh, introduce Gideon uh, Oliver. Gideon Oliver is the president of the National Lawyers Guild and a celebrated champion of social justice in the New York metropolitan area. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, hi, I, I'm Gideon Oliver. I am the president of the National Lawyers Guild New York City chapter, um, and I have a brief statement that, I, that I'd like to read. Uh, Judge Prescott's refusal to release Jeremy Hammond on bail purportedly because he's a flight risk or because he allegedly presents a danger to the community is a symptom of the political nature of the government's prosecution of Jeremy. Denial of the bail is the denial of bail is the latest in a series of egregious failures of the state to uphold basic constitutional principles, clearly apparent in the political prosecutions of whistleblowers and liberators of information such as Jeremy, who should be applauded and supported, not vilified and punished before trial. As Jeremy's lawyers argued in his bail hearing last week, there are conditions under which he could be released subject to court-directed and supervised restrictions on, for example, his ability to travel and his access to computers. In fact, the court regularly releases people accused of crimes far more serious than the crimes Jeremy is accused of committing under such conditions. Jeremy's no stranger to court supervision and complying with bail conditions. His continuing pretrial imprisonment, imprisonment will severely hamper his attorney's ability to prepare a defense and to defend Jeremy at trial. It's an expression of the ways in which, particularly in political cases such as Jeremy's, the state will go to any lengths to punish people who shed light on the state's and corporations' dirty laundry. Now comes the revelation that Chief Judge Preska's husband is among those the government would count as victims of the crimes Jeremy is alleged to have committed. Uh, Jeremy's legal team, I understand, uh, will, for, will file formal, a formal motion uh, early next week uh, asking uh, Judge Preska to recuse herself, and, and we should all join in that request. Um, and uh, beyond that, I join in other supporters of Jeremy in calling on the state uh, to take the Constitution and its promises of due process, the right to prepare and present the defense, and the free and full and partial administration of justice seriously, and in calling on Judge Preska to recuse herself in this case. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is uh, Emily Kunstler. No, actually, she's not going to speak. Sorry. OK, uh, Andy Bickelbaum. Hi, welcome. Uh, Andy is uh, an artist, activist, and filmmaker and co-creator of the infamous Yes Man, the December 2012 hack of Stratfor, 
revealed that Andy was being followed and surveilled by Stratford at the request of Dow Chemical for his work with the Yes Man, with the Yes Man, to support the victims of the 1984 Bhopal gas disaster. Thank you. Um, I'd first like to read a statement from uh, one of the Bhopal activists, Srikant Sarangi. Um, this came in. Uh, the leaked Stratford emails are telling in that, despite repeated assertions that it, it has no outstanding liability for Bhopal, the corporate giant Dow Chemical decided to hire the intelligence and surveillance company Stratford to spy on and monitor Bhopal activists from 2004 to 2011. In fact, as late as March, Dow CEO Andrew Laveris argued that ongoing outrage about Bhopal absolutely did not pose a threat to Dow. But if, as Dow holds, Bhopal is a non-issue and all grievances are settled, why did Dow enlist Stratford to, for example, gather information about the current and former staff of the ICJB, uh, uh, the International Committee for Justice in Bhopal, document the ICJB's online activity, as well as that of UK-based Bhopal Medical Appeal, and report events and programs held by the Yes Men? The global outcry over Dow's sponsorship of the 2012 Summer Olympics and subsequent public relations fiasco confirmed that, on the contrary, the issue of Bhopal remains more important than ever. If anything, the leaks show that however much Dow tries to downplay Bhopal in public, behind closed doors it is very much concerned about it. And this is our statement from the yes one. Uh, Whoever uh, is responsible for the leak of the Stratford emails, I want to thank him from the bottom of my heart, or her. Uh, whoever released them performed a function that's an integral part of democracy as surely as voting or running for public office. Whether it's through civil disobedience or investigative reporting, which this is sort of in between, exposing evil doing is indeed an integral part of democracy that we utterly depend on. There are many ways to expose evil doing and fight against it. In Bhopal, a number of folks have been doing it for 28 years, ever since a chemical plant exploded in, the, in their city exploded in 1984, killing 3,000 people in one night and 20,000 more across the years. Their main target is the Dow Chemical Company, the company ultimately responsible for the disaster. To try to hold Dow accountable, the activists there have gone on hunger strikes, marches from Bhopal to Delhi, and so on. They've had a lot of success getting attention for it in India and have recently gotten the Indian government to make concessions and promise to clean up the site. Their real target is Dow. And since Dow has no legal recourse against these activists and can't stop them, they've spent a whole lot of money to hire Stratford to spy on their victims in Bhopal to find out what their victim, what moves their victims might make next. No one would have found out about this sick situation if there hadn't been this leak of millions of emails of which Jeremy is accused. Whoever did this leak exposed a lot of other corporate wrongdoing too. Stratford was also spying on Occupy, PETA, WikiLeaks, Anonymous, and the Yes Man. Yes, us. They were spying on us because in 2004, we joined the Bhopal activists in trying to shame Dow into providing redress for the 1984 disaster. We set up a fake Dow website and got ourselves invited by the BBC to speak on the 20th anniversary of the disaster as Dow. And we announced to the world that Dow is going to compensate the victims, clean up the site, and basically do everything that Dow should. The world loved this announcement, though the market punished Dow by cutting billions off its share price. There was an enormous amount of press and millions of people found out about Dow's responsibility for the world's biggest industrial disaster. Now publicly, Dow said nothing about this, nothing. And privately, they paid Stratford probably hundreds of thousands of dollars at least to spy on us. That's very sinister, but it's also very flattering. It means that Dow and other companies see us and the Bhopal victims and Occupy as a threat. A threat that can actually change things, which it can. Maybe not with each action, but cumulatively. Thanks to activists in Bhopal and the Occupy movement, and the millions of activists who are fighting in their own ways to bring evildoers to their knees, slowly but surely, inexorably, all these people are bringing democracy to America. Um, we, uh, Yes Men, learned this when we joined up and participated in the Occupy movement, uh, who Stratford also spied on. And we discovered that all the activism that sometimes seems pointless actually does have a great effect. 
the Occupy movement, for example, itself the product of so much activism before it, profoundly shaped the presidential election and continues to have even profounder effects. The bad guys know this, and they should also know that as long as companies like Dow fight people, people will fight back. And as long as companies like Stratfor fight in extra-legal, unethical ways to keep tabs on those fighting for positive change, they can expect to be brought down again and again and again, no matter how hard they try to put the lid on it, no matter who they try to put in jail. Democratic action is inexorable, and it won't stop. Um, and here's a little plug. Uh, we're trying to add our own little stream to this flood by building what we're calling an action switchboard, which will give help and advice to activists uh, around the country, world maybe, wanting to create or plug into direct actions against the enemies of democracy. Actions of the funny sort that we're known for. And we'll be launching it alongside our movie called The Yes Men Are Revolting. Uh, sorry for the plug. Um, our fondest dream would be that Stratfor open a whole division devoted to activists <laughs> of these sorts, and uh, and then another hero can bring uh, it down to its knees once again. Thanks. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is John Kennethal, a journalist and co-host of Radio Dispatch. John re recently covered the military tribunals at Guantanamo Bay. His writing has appeared in The Nation, Truthout, and Salon. John will be speaking about the ever-growing and pervasive practices of private intelligence outfits like Stratford. Hi, my name is John Neffel, and as a journalist, the kind of crime that Jerry Hammond is accused of is invaluable to bring transparency to what is otherwise a completely opaque and ever-pervasive national security state. In 2011, over 90 million documents were classified. Four million people, both in government and in the private sector, have access to those classified information, to that classified information, and there is incredible profit to be made by increasing the national security state, not to mention incredible profit to be made with the constant erosion of civil liberties that we've seen in communities of color, at least since the 1980s, with the war, the racist war on drugs, and have now been moved to uh, Muslim communities and activist communities as well. With regards to Judge Preska and her conflict of interest, this is, uh, it's obviously a conflict of interest. She uh, should recuse herself. And not only was her husband personally affected by the hack, but Judge Preska herself was also an associate at Cahill Gordon in Rindell. And so that's just further evidence of her lack of um, ability to be impartial in this case. Further, what we see here is symptomatic of a larger problem. The, the uh, justice system is no longer a tool for accountability or for oversight. It's, it's often a shield that protects the most powerful and uh, at the same time brings the hammer down on those who seek to, to resist it. And what we have here is just a symbol of what happens in federal courts all the time. It's just a little bit more uh, obvious and, and uh, toxic in this case uh, than, than in normal cases. Further, the incentives for the government are to continue to classify material, continue to keep things secret, and so much so that when I was in uh, Guantanamo Bay covering the uh, pretrial hearing of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, I heard the, uh, the lead prosecutor argue that the five co-defendants' thoughts, experiences, and memories should be treated as presumptively classified. So we have now a situation where people's subjectivity is actually treated as classified, and the, the torture that, that those men were put through is um, the state has every interest in making sure that they are never allowed to, to talk about what happened. And it is only through non-traditional methods of uh, seeking transparency that we learn what our government is doing. Leaks that appear in the newspaper are nearly always uh, strategic. They're almost always in the interest of the leaker of, of the administration. 
And so only through the the kinds of, of means that, that uh, Jeremy Hammond is, is accused of, uh, of, of seeking transparency can we actually know what our government is doing in our name as, as citizens. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, I, I'm happy to answer any questions if you if you have any. Could you just summarize what he's been accused of? Um, Jeremy ha uh, Hammond is being accused of uh, hacking into Stratford Global Intelli Intelligence Agency and uh, releasing information, including credit card information. Any other questions? Do you have a date of when um, the motion is going to be filed on behalf of the legal team? Uh, that will be tomorrow. Um, Jeremy Hammond's legal team will be filing a motion of recusal for Judge Preska tomorrow. She has Judge Preska has refused to step down herself. That's why his lawyers are taking this next action. Um, all anyone wants uh, is for Jeremy to get a chance at a fair trial, and it's clear that uh, Judge Loretta Preska cannot give him one with um, her involvement in Stratford. And what was the, the sentence that was levied during the bail hearing? Uh, Jeremy Hammond, according to Judge Prescott, Jeremy Hammond is looking at uh, 37 years to life in prison um, for charges of, uh, of hacking into Stratford. Do we know what any of the other accused are facing? I don't have any look it up and get back to you. Um, thank you. Isn't it uh, terrible injustice that uh, a private company like Stratford can spy on all kinds of people and then nobody but the citizens can decide what's going on in that country? That's like terrible injustice. Yes, that is a terrible injustice, and I believe that this goes to show how much power corporations have, as opposed to really people like you, like me, who um, we simply don't have any recourse for this. Like we are, it feels like we're up against uh, a Goliath. But we stick together, we fight, and I mean, at the very least, Jeremy Hammond should have a, a fair, fair trial. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for coming out, um, and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Yep. Alright, that was the uh, press conference um, for Jeremy Hammond. I uh, appreciate everybody checking that out right now. Um, follow me on, on Twitter. Uh, at SIKK412. Uh, we'll be heading back down to DC uh, Friday morning. I was just up here to grab some equipment uh, for uh, independent media and for PMC, so we'll be back down there soon. Uh, we'll be covering the Uganda uh, action um, at, the, at the embassy as well. Um, also, uh, check the link uh, in the description below after donations for WePay. Uh, if you would like to make a monetary donation, please do so. I, I have all the, I'll have all the audio if anybody needs it uh, for independent media. I have it. But the audio, I'll send video. If people have Dropbox, I can send it to you. But so if anybody needs this, uh, who works for any type of uh, media outlet besides a corporate media outlet, send it to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you watching the stream. Peace and love.